uh, it's not necessarily um, being born with it or not being born with it. It's just a matter of like training your brain to unlock the necessary portion that allows you to facilitate whatever it is you're trying to be, you know, a talent at. And, oh, well, going to go down the woo territory again. What is <laughs> um, an experience I, I don't regret is, is going through cancer because it, it molded me, but it also showed me some things that got me thinking, you know, like when I was going through chemo, mosquitoes wouldn't touch me. And, you know, so I was like, well, here's a really good product idea. Uh, just give people chemo as a <laughs> m- mosquito repellent. But I guess I'm not very good at it, even though I really love coming up with that, these ideas. It's like, oh, well, I'm dumb enough that I don't know any better, but I did it. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and maybe that's part of uh, talent, too. What if education was structured from the ground up based on seeking out and, and highlighting a natural talent? You know, well, wasn't that actually um, a Star Montessori Trek story is supposed to be kind of like that, but it's not. No two people are really alike and they share genetically like most information. They're almost the same, but it only takes like a couple variables for things to be wildly different. Oh, uh, yeah. Microfiber all over my fucking glasses. <laughs> Okay, welcome to another Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and, uh, you know, why don't you like, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's what, what we'd like. And I'm Casey Rochefort, and we write our own music, so you're going to want to hang out to the end. And uh, that's a very strong suggestion, because <laughs> it's going to be a cool thing. And uh, I guarantee it. You can get those on Spotify and iTunes and, and patreon.com slash KSM vidcast. So check it out. So uh, what would you like to discuss on this uh, fine July evening? Well, um, it is it is a fine July evening. Of course, I have to have the windows closed. So it's, a, it's getting a little warm up here. But fortunately, uh, as we speak, the sun is very low. So it's cooling off so that's good um, but that has nothing to do with the subject i just oh. wanted to mention that <laughs> um, this wasn't a segue or anything was it um, climate change talk yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um no I, th- just something like i was thinking today um about something and i thought it would make for a really interesting topic of discussion and 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 probably goes into all kinds of different directions that we can discuss um and it's more, it's kind of just like a question, I guess. Are we born talented? Oh, interesting. Um, uh, yes and no. Um, there, there are like people who just seem to have a natural talent, you know, like, yeah, like the knack basically. Yeah. Like I think, Tiger Woods was like a super good golfer when he was like five or something, you know, like, wow, (laughs) that's impressive. Yeah. He like picked up a golf club and just knew what to do with it and stuff. But then, you know, there's, there's other people that like, you know, I don't, I don't know that much about sports as a great analogy or, or whatever, but I I know that there's other people that, you know, just have to work at it or they try one thing and realize they're better at another thing or, you know, I, 
but yeah, I mean, it's certainly something that you can make better by practice and stuff, yeah. but that doesn't mean that you weren't like predisposed to have like an easier time with it. Yeah, well, I mean, like Beethoven was like a virtuoso when he was like six or something. Uh, Mozart. Was it Mozart? Yeah. I think Beethoven was. Didn't Beethoven study under Mozart? I, I don't know. I don't know my uh, musical history. Maybe yeah, uh, they're probably like centuries Maybe. apart. I don't know. It's possible. Um, but there There's are a definitely. Theory that uh, Beethoven was black. Oh. Have you heard that? I. I. I well, I wasn't there, so I, I, yeah. I sure anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was interesting because it's like paintings, even from that time. I think they depicted him as a white guy. It's like yeah. that's that's whitewashing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it'd be difficult to tell. I mean, I'd like to see some in, uh, some evidence for that. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, there are definitely people who have kind of a natural talent or it seems like they do that they they take to something really easily um yeah i'm not really i don't i don't ascribe to the idea that that like you're born innately talented at something i think it's more like you may just be fortunate enough to have the right set of conditions in your brain or whatever or the right environment environmental variables that allow you to explore that that i don't yeah well, sometimes I, it's physical too you know like take, well that, no no that's sing, true like that's singing true. you know singing has more than anything to do with how your vocal cords are put together well and also and how you really, how you hear too because like yeah. people that are tone deaf i think they're hearing a different frequency um so they they don't they're they're off key uh, naturally, I guess, and some people are not and can sing perfect pitch. Or people like recognize notes and stuff. They just know somehow mm -hmm. what what those are. Um, but I mean, as, aside from the physical stuff, let's just say, I mean, the physical things would be obvious. If you if you're born with genes that instruct your body to make you very tall and lanky, you might end up being like a really good basketball player or a good runner or something like, I mean, those are obvious, but what about things that are not physical? What about things that are psychological that like being good at a particular skill that, that usually requires a lot of knowledge, like mathematics or something, you know, could, could somebody mm -hmm. be born a math wizard, which to me doesn't even make any sense because of what mathematics is and, and like, in my view, it's an it's definitely something you have to uh, learn and understand to be good at it. So there would have to be other factors at play, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's why I say yes and no because, like, no matter what, like, in order to be, you know, what we consider like an expert or a genius or a virtuoso in any of these particular things, I mean, all those things did take some level of practice. Yeah, I'm more thinking of like this is the first time you tried it sort of thing. And, you know, you've got a leg up like a huge leg up, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and in that aspect, you know, I think, I mean, you can certainly be born with this natural talent and not even be the best at it if you don't work at it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's, it's more like a, a potential at that point. It's just, you exactly know, that, that but when you, it comes but when it comes to math though it's interesting like i've never math has never really clicked with me i was never really good at it mm -hmm. and then i had my my stem cell transplant and all of a sudden i kind of understood it and hmm. that and i wasn't in school at the time like it wasn't until i went back to school that i realized uh, somewhere along the point between the last time i was in college and now all of a sudden i understand math you know like you know <laughs> So, uh, that that is weird, and now maybe there's something about understanding that that requires like a, a prerequisite uh, mind state or something. Well, I think uh, what that shows is that you know because radiation can alter things, 
uh, it's not necessarily um, being born with it or not being born with it. It's just a matter of like training your brain to unlock the necessary portion that allows you to facilitate whatever it is you're trying to be, you know, a talent at. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Cause I think a lot of it is, is uh, people's inability to do things um, is certainly psychological that, that self doubt or, or something. And sometimes the people who are super cavalier about things are the ones that get really good at something. They, they're like, they don't even know how much they suck um, and they don't even care. So they just do until it works. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, that's, that, that's me kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> like but, I, I'm not, I'm not the handiest guy, you know, as far as like doing things the proper way, but I do always. Kind well, of what is a, the proper way? That That's yeah, the thing, you know, well, I what, mean, you, whatever it look, it, there's, there's a, a saying in programming, you know, if it looks right, it is. Um, <laughs> and I think that's appropriate uh, that, that as long as it works, you know, but anyway, go, go ahead. Sorry. I kind of. Yeah. So like, I, I have this ability to like, do things that require two people by myself. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> Wait a minute. Did that radiation like give you a, a second set of limbs that kind of extends out? From if underneath? it did, my brain isn't aware of them. Like, <laughs> when I look at my body, I just see a normal body, but maybe I'm like the dude from Mortal Kombat. I just yeah. Arms <laughs> coming out of my ribs or something. But, oh, uh, yeah. You know, you like, got, was, like tentacles or something. Yeah. I was so I have a direct connection to internet now and it took you know like drilling holes in the wall and running ethernet and stuff all the way upstairs to where the modem is right um but i had to yeah i couldn't go up the stairs and just across because there's like there's dogs upstairs that would chew it if it was along the floor yeah and there was like this weird oblong skylight thing that would have had me have to like get a ladder and like run it all the way around the ceiling and it probably would have taken like a hundred feet of cable. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm just gonna have to go outside. And then I had to get it up to the second floor somehow, like, you know, with a limp floppy cable <laughs> <laughs> handing it up to nobody that wasn't going to work. <laughs> so I like undid this, this uh, uh, what do you call it? Coat hanger, and kind of stuck <laughs> what do you call it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what should we call it? <laughs> um, and I stuck it through the window screen with a little hook on the end, and then I went back downstairs and I put the Ethernet cable into that and crimped it off, and then I went back upstairs and pulled it up. So it was like, all it takes is just thinking about how many extra steps you have to add in order to do something by yourself. I, I put together a loft bed by myself, like holding all four posts up, like while screwing something in somehow. Like <laughs> I've been there doing the same kind of thing. You know, yeah. uh, there's a desk up here that I had to bring up um, and I used ratchet straps as like a hoist mechanism. So I had ratchet straps like tied all over, making kind of a web. And then I used other ratchet straps, like a, a pair of them back and forth, like, pulling a little bit at a time and because I didn't have any kind of hoist technology at, at the time. And yeah. I, yeah, I got it up and there's no way most people would look at that and be like, Oh, you can't do that. And it's like, Oh, well, I'm dumb enough that I don't know any better, but I did it. You know, <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> and, and maybe that's part of uh, talent too, is just doing things despite uh, not really being uh like doing it the right way like you're saying you know um actually a couple stories uh i i love storytelling so i'm going to tell a couple <laughs> short very short stories um my one of my friends uh, years ago uh, he was telling me uh, about his own upbringing you know and he, he was uh, like he's always been kind of a, a fairly clever creative person and pretty intelligent. Um, and he said that when he was probably in like elementary school, 
he, he, he said he was so dumb. He didn't know anything. He couldn't grasp any concept, got horrible grades, just did terrible in school, just the dumbest kid ever. And this one time they were going through in this class he was in, they were, they were going through like slides or something like that. And the teacher was asking, it was uh, like uh, geological formations and stuff. And the teacher was asking like how things form and uh, like showing a picture of something. Oh, how did this form? And one of the pictures that came up was uh, like an arch uh, of, of earth in, in the desert. And the teacher asked like, Oh, how, how did this form? And he, he doesn't even know why, but for some reason he was just looked up at it and he understood. And he's like the wind. And she's like, yeah, you're right. And he said, from that point on, everything made sense. <laughs> it was that one moment. Like as soon as he got that, he started getting everything else. And I, you know, take that for what, what you will. But, um, you know, speaking of mathematics, too, I'll tell my own story. I absolutely sucked at math. Um, you know, I was doing a little bit of stuff, like outside the box when, when I was in high school and everything. Um, like, but I failed or did very, very poorly in almost every math class, except for electronic business math, which was basically 10 key accounting kind of stuff, which I loved. Like that, that was actually really fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so, well, we're going to get a little bit woo for a second um, because I, I did see a UFO this one time, maybe more than once. And there was this short period of time where all these weird experiences were happening. Um, you know, I'd have recollections throughout the day of machinery and various mechanisms and stuff like that, that weird things that didn't make any sense. Um, but this one time, uh, like after the, I'd say this is probably like about a month that of activity where I was like having these strange experiences where I'd wake up in this exact same time every night, feel like I'm being watched and no, I'm like, there's something in the window. I can't look at it. Um, and, but at, at any rate, um, so I had this vision of this machine and drew it out and, and, you know, uh, kind of recorded my, my thoughts on it, um, for whatever, like, I don't even know what it was, but after that day, like all of a sudden, engineering principles, mathematical principles, like all kinds of stuff started to make sense. And, and then, you know, I wonder like in light of all the stuff happening, um, all these events and seeing like lights in the sky and stuff like, is this some kind of weird brain injection of information? I don't know. But from that point on, like it was easy. And before that it was a freaking struggle. So I don't know. And, you know, something you said earlier about uh, the programming saying, if it looks right, it is, right? Yeah. There's a lot of different ways to come upon talent. You know, um, I, I, I recall a, a story from uh, Dave Grohl, who started out as the drummer of Nirvana and then played guitar and sang for Foo Fighters. He, mm -hmm. he said he taught himself guitar by looking at the strings as if they were drums, like the E string is the bass drum, the, you know, the snares up here. And, and oh. he, he thought of the strings as hitting the drums. And that's huh. like a really interesting way of looking at it. And, it, and it, I'm, I'm always preaching about analogical thinking. And it's like when you have the more and more experiences that you add on, the more likely you are to be able to interpret a different way of going about doing something you couldn't have done before yeah yeah well and there's so, always more than one way to tackle things and that's something that like really annoys me um about many uh fields i guess that, that there's a bunch of these quote-unquote experts that are like well this is the way you got to do it if you don't do it this way you're not doing it right it's like you know 
the destination is the goal. Like making something that works is all that counts. Like it does it. If you write a beautiful song, but you've never taken a music class in your entire life, you know, well, who cares? You you created a a brilliant song, mm-hmm. um, and and or wrote a program or assembled a bed or something, you know, like Ikea furniture or whatever. Like it, it, it doesn't matter if you're doing it right. It matters that you're doing it. And, and in fact, following the same process over and over again, like not deviating from the norm ever is exactly how progress does not happen. Like we never learn new clever ways to do things if we're not trying stuff that we never tried before. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's exemplified in, in uh, video game playthroughs and, and speed running and stuff that people try weird things to find sneaky ways of shortcuts and uh, stuff like that. And it's like, it, that would have never been found out if everybody just played it by the book, basically. Or uh, taking four hours to remove a swing plate assembly from an HP 4300. And, <laughs> and then we figure out that there's like a way to do it in half an hour. Like, oh, actually, it was more like 10 minutes, too. 10 yeah. minutes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that one was a little bit more difficult difficult because it had the scanner on the top. Um, so there's more stuff. that, had, But there were ways around that, too. And, and that's something, too. Information sharing is really important. People who have tried things, sharing their tricks and, and, and things like that are really important because it builds on itself. Um, that, like We would have never known that if it weren't for that community sharing information. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of cool. And, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't some kind of necessarily a guru that figured it out. It might be some kind of bumblefuck that's like, Oh, I wonder what happens if I put a screwdriver in here. Oh, oh well, that was easy. You know, like <laughs> that. So sometimes just trying things like uh, using that, that worn out phrase, thinking outside the box um, can yield like revolutionary results. Mm-hmm. I'll and, tell you what, though, there isn't enough information sharing on taking apart my Harley. Like, <laughs> I, it, there was there was like zero help on YouTube, so I should well, probably you know of, what that get might... that tripod and make my own video. <laughs> you should, uh, and and that's the thing. It's like you know, see a need, fill a need. Like I, I, and I'm all about that. If if you <laughs> learn something that's useful, share it with people. Like see a whole uh, that's so out. important. Um, now maybe maybe uh, that company suffers from the same ills that apple suffers from and that they they squish anybody trying to uh supply diy stuff uh i think (laughs) john deere is another company that doesn't like people working on their own stuff Uh, yeah so so if you're if you're telling people how to do things they don't like you and they're gonna find some way to shut you down fucking capitalist pigs (laughs) Uh, it's it's more than that well that's a whole different topic um i mean why else wouldn't they want people to work on their own stuff they just want to make money off of you right like well yeah yeah (laughs) yeah exactly well it's not capitalism that's that's a little bit different but the sentiment is understood (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh but you know if you're like apple oh you're holding it wrong that kind of thing uh Jeez. Well, so here's something I've, I've noticed. Some of the most talented people I know of didn't have a good life. Like they, they actually kind of, kind of lived like a pretty horrible, they had pretty horrible upbringings. Um, You know, they had a lot of struggle and things like that, or they might've had like, physical or mental limitations or socioeconomic limitations, but yet they still rose above. And I kind of wonder if that sort of thing is a driving force behind people getting really good at a talent. 
you know, if you, if you have everything, if you, you're fed with a silver spoon, like life is good, what reason do you have to, to do anything different? You know, but if you have nothing, well, you got to start getting clever. You got to start getting creative, you know, and, and find something that no one else can do like actors or, or musicians or whatever, like they're finding a niche that it, you can't just buy. Um, and, and so maybe yeah. there's something to be said for, for like actually having kind of not the best life as being the genesis of being really great in the future. I don't know. I, I kind of worry that that's more like a correlation causation sort of thing. Maybe there's a bit of a confirmation bias, in, you know, like, because those, those stories are always the ones you hear, right? Because they're so fantastic. Like, wow, they, they came from nothing and became a billionaire and stuff with this great idea. No, but no, talent, talent, not money. I said idea. Well, you, but, I didn't but, say I mean, money. <laughs> you said they became a billionaire. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's the only thing. I mean, I'm talking like, about like ta talented, or you know, like if if you don't get rich from your talent, then fine. Like talented and or billionaire. Uh, well, the, some the people point, like fame or whatever. I, I was trying to get to a point. Okay, <laughs> and now I've forgotten it. Ah, shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We should just talk about capitalism and get it over with. Well, well you, <laughs> you, would, you were saying like um, correlation causation kind of thing. That was what you were saying before. Oh, yeah. I, I don't necessarily think it's because of hardship in life. Just because like I feel like the, there's a lot of talent not being discovered because of hardships. You know, because they no, don't you, have easy access to get the education for instance to build upon a natural talent or you know to follow a great idea you know you can you can be this great thinker and have just way too many roadblocks no matter how perseverant you are and and i i often find myself wondering like how many great people are we missing out on oh probably a lot I mean, how many of them have been lost to wars, yeah. senseless wars, you know, for bullshit reasons? You, Persecution. Like, and yeah, like yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, I would say it's fairly common. Um, I don't know of too many people who have had a super good life that are super talented necessarily. I, I mean, just, I'm just thinking of my own observations out there that um, the most talented people have had to struggle a bit. Um, so yeah. I, I wonder if that's the kind of thing it's kind of like, you know, you don't build muscle by sitting in a chair, eating potato chips and watching TV, you know, you <laughs> climb mountains, like you, you challenge yourself, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. and, and if life challenges you, it might cause you to rise to the, the occasion and, and, and tap into something that you might, a, a particular special thing that you have, um, to overcome that. I guess you could say that maybe like, uh, what's it like American Idol or something where like somebody just walks in, gets an audition, and then they win this reality show and suddenly they've got a record deal. Well, they kind of had a lucky break, you know, as far the, as like the getting noticed part that's well, actually the fact that sometimes they, more important than the talent itself. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, for sure. Like the fact that th their lucky break was the fact that a TV show like that existed yeah. and brought them in and gave them a chance. Um, and, and I, mean, I, no, I think you're got, right. Everybody's got a sob story. It's not like there's really anybody that lives a completely sheltered life. So that there's always some kind of hardship that somebody can point to. True. It's, you know, I, I like what you'd said, how, how many, you know, it's kind of how many Nikola Tesla's slipped through the cracks basically. Yeah. Um, and, and I would say probably a lot and that's unfortunate. Now I don't know that there's really a way to facilitate every potential Nikola Tesla to get their chance because for every, every legit Tesla, there's going to be a bunch of fakes. 
or or people that are uh, yeah yeah edison's <laughs> it's gonna be a bunch of edison's um not that edison i like i don't want to i don't want to rag on edison too much because actually he was he had some good ideas but he was a dick um let's face it he electrocuted fucking elephants to prove that you know ac current was dangerous what an asshole <laughs> oh but i mean yeah it, it I mean, it, it's probably just the unfortunate state of things being humans on planet Earth that, like, not everybody is going to realize their potential. And and that sucks. Um, and it really sucks for... It doesn't just... It, it's not an individual thing like you yourself are going to benefit. The whole world might benefit from something. Uh, there are very simple uh, ideas that people have had that have been... That have changed the world. Uh, germ theory it comes to mind right now just thinking about it that the guy that came up with that idea like he was shunned by doctors they were like well oh you're suggesting that our hands are dirty oh geez oh get out of here you know but he was right like it, how could you have a system that allowed him to test his ideas and prove them right i, I don't know that such a thing exists not something universal at least what if um, what if education was structured from the ground up based on seeking out and and highlighting a natural talent? You know, well, wasn't that actually um, a Star Montessori Trek story? Is supposed to be kind of like that, but it's not. Remember what, what was that episode of Star Trek TNG? Uh, the the planet they went to that had that um, supercomputer that was like simultaneously giving everybody everything they wanted, but was also irradiating them and making them sterile. Um, but that was what their system Remember, th They Isn't had like twilight zone. No, no TNG. Uh, like I think would, it was a twilight zone episode as well. It, it could have been, but it, the, the computer would basically figure out your innate talents and, and direct you down the course of, of that and, and you know huh. give you the resources and um Here, here's the uh creepy thing about that that twilight zone episode featured a young i forget the actor's name now but he played the guy that like thought away the entire who's not species in in tng oh he was in that twilight zone episode so, oh wow tie there well, interesting <laughs> nice nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyway <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but but that that was the the point of that, um, I guess, the, or the the way things were structured in that society is like the computer would figure out what you're good at, and that's the direction you go in. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I don't know necessarily that that's the best way to do things. I mean, that seems a little bit too too utopian to to actually work. Um, uh, you know, I'm not you know, saying like teach them nothing else but what they're talented at because, you know, for, for one thing, you wouldn't get any kind of analogical thinking because you'd have no other experiences to draw off of. But you also don't necessarily love the thing you're talented at. Well, and, and that was kind of, kind of do what you want to love. You know, but yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, you know? and that's the thing. It's like, what if you're really good at something you absolutely detest? Yeah, like I, that is entirely possible. Um, in fact, a lot of things that people like to do, they're not even that good at it, So is that the best way to go? Like just simply is society better if everybody who is good at something is doing the thing they're good at, or is it better if we're kind of just sort of muddling our way through things? Um, you know, everybody coming out of middle school saying, I'm going to be an astronaut. Oh, I'm going to be a veterinarian, you know, having those big dreams and then realizing, Oh yeah, that's, that's a bad idea. Um, <laughs> or, or it's not possible or something like that. The challenges are too much. You know, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I, I've had a broad array of experiences, all the different jobs I've done. I mean, I'm kind of just like a, like, okay, I got to pay the bills. I got to have a job. So I'll just get something. And that's actually been really 
beneficial for me because I've learned a lot of skills. I've done a lot of things, um, some stuff I like, some I don't. Um, but every single thing, be it positive or negative, it, like molded me. Mm-hmm. I, I would not trade those experiences because if it weren't for some of those things, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, and and I, I am completely content with where I am today um, as far yeah. as my moment in time, basically. Yeah. Same, same here. I mean, like I, uh, I mean, I, I love coming up with ideas that, you know, might be like a really cool invention or something. And, um, but I'm not necessarily good at it. Like, you know, for instance, um, an experience I, I don't regret is, is going through cancer because it, it molded me, but it also showed me some things that got me thinking, you know, like when I was going through chemo, mosquitoes wouldn't touch me. And, you know, so I was like, well, here's a really good product idea. Uh, just give people chemo as <laughs> a m- mosquito repellent. But I guess I'm not very good at it, even though I really love coming up with that, these ideas. Uh, well, no, and, and the, the, this is the thing. It's like, you could be onto something. <laughs> like, you may not necessarily have to give people chemo, but merely understand why the mosquitoes didn't come to you. Why are they going around everybody else, but, but not you? It may not necessarily be the regimen of chemicals that you're, well, yeah, you're it could have just been, body. could have just been aromatic. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. It could be something super simple. Like maybe you just got to spray some cologne or something or perfume or whatever. And, and like psh, no more mosquitoes, make your smell, make yourself smell like a vat of chemicals and yeah. <laughs> no one will bother you. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. And that was kind of what I was thinking too, is like you'd gone through chemo and I feel like that was in the end, a positive thing. It, it changed the course of your life in a good way. Like, would you, if you had not gone through that, if you had not had cancer twice, um, would you be going down the direction you're going today? No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause as long as I've known you, you work at restaurants, uh, you know, we ran a business together, we did music and stuff, but that was kind of it. And after that, you decided like, Hey, I'm going to go down the path of biology and college and science and stuff. And I mean, that's a good thing, but it took a shitty thing to kind of initiate yeah. that. Um, and, uh, and I'm not a great scientist either, but you know, at least it's things that I've done mm-hmm. and people I've met. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You know, and- like I, I take pride though in, in not being, good at any one thing but having experience in a lot of things because every now and then i get kind of a gem of an idea that mm-hmm. saves the day or something and and it only happened because of all that experience so jack of all trades master of none kind of thing i mean that's sort of mm-hmm. my own personal philosophy so i can identify with that um, <clears throat> and i think that's something that people should strive for honestly like don't don't look to be an expert you know try lots of things that's really important because you and the things that you exhibit you know people when i was a little kid i uh, there's pictures of me playing a piano or well, playing a piano when i was like two years old or something and everybody's like oh he's gonna be a pianist i was like well i'm so glad that i did not become a pianist because there's there's no work for pianists today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unless you're a Yanni. I mean, you know, I could do the long hair thing and get all the babes and, you know, that or kind of thing. Or the uh, piano at Nordstrom's at the mall. Oh, wait, it's not 1994 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's a good story about that with my friend Mario. Um, <laughs> how he, like, pushed the uh, tuxedo-wearing piano player at Nordstrom's aside and started playing music and everybody came from everywhere and they stood around him. Whereas before the guy in the tuxedo is playing like whatever and, and nobody cared. They were just walking by. But as soon as my friend in his like 49ers jacket 
Uh, you know, <laughs> like he's playing the piano and everybody stands around like the whole store stopped. Um, and that was a cool moment. Huh. But it, it, if, if, you, if you don't try a lot of things, you're not going to realize what you're actually good at and, and what you're good at might not be because in order to be good at something, right. You have to be exposed to it. Um, if you live in some fancy gated community and stuff and you never leave the house, well, you're not going to know that you might actually be good at construction or something, unless you actually take up a job in that. And find out like, wow, actually, I really like this and I'm actually pretty good at it. You know, it, it, it comes down to what you're exposed to. So trying a lot of things and going to a lot of places, especially things you're not comfortable with, because that's, that's something that I think is important is challenging yourself, like doing things you wouldn't otherwise do um, just, just to see that that's what that's what i do i do stuff i'm like well i wonder uh can i do this well let's find out <laughs> yeah and and i teach yourself learn to teach yourself learn how to learn you know that kind of thing um but trying a lot of different things even things that you think might not necessarily be uh something you're good at or something maybe that it's beneath you um I, See, but isn't that a talent in itself though that you may or may not be predisposed to being good at is teaching yourself yeah, yeah. no you're right like i i'm it not particularly skill. good at teaching myself like i'm i'm a little better at like just hacking my way through it like reasoning my way through the steps of something, but yeah. that also requires like at least some kind of core knowledge about what it is I'm trying to do. True. Yeah. You know, so like when it comes to something that like, I have like, I've never touched this. I don't know. Like I would not be able to really get through it too well. I mean, like not quickly anyway. And I mean, a lot of that could just be, um, you know, cognitive, difficulties or something you know because i i got a touch of the autism or whatever so you know maybe i just think a little differently or whatever it yeah is, you know? but, which in itself might actually carry a few advantages oh yeah certain for areas. sure yeah like musically probably mm -hmm. um you know because like i i mean i've i'm not like the greatest musician in the world but like I, even as a kid i could sit and write sheet music in my head with no instruments around because I can hear the notes yeah. in my head, like in, in the, in the exact pitch that they are. And, and, you know, maybe that was memory or whatever, but mm -hmm. I don't know that everyone can, you know, you know, you can visualize a memory, but how many people can like audio lies <laughs> a sound uh, like, I don't, there isn't even a word for it, right? No, like, <laughs> I, I will tell you, most people can't. Um, and, and I'm one of those people as well that, that can detect pitch. Like I, I, I even noticed like my friend was playing his, uh, we were driving around and he was playing a cassette back in the 90s. And I was like, your cassette player is running a bit slow. And he's like, what? It sounds fine to me. And I'm like, no, it's actually running slow. It's a little bit off key. Mm -hmm. It's a little tiny bit slow. And he's like, oh, uh, no, it isn't like <laughs> uh, so. And, and, you know, that could possibly be something pseudo physical. Um, maybe I, I, I don't know. I, uh, I've noticed things like that, too. Like, I think Red Dwarf season 10 or 11, the theme song was ever slightly a, a slower tempo. Mm hmm. And, it and, always goes back to Red Dwarf. I, I like that. <laughs> I think it was Red Dwarf. There was some show where I was like, I was like, oh, the theme song's a little different. And somebody was like, no, it's not. It sounds exactly the same. And I was like, no, it's different. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I got to say, one, one thing that you do that, that is awesome it is like 
musical creativity. You have a knack for doing really clever things, really novel things. You know, some some things work, some things don't, but it's it's always very novel and different. And and you know, me being a very methodical by the book systematic kind of person, like I I kind of look up to that. Like, hey, wow, I wish I could do that. Um, <laughs> You know, and I've, like, I've always appreciated your ability to like construct a good beat because I, I, I'm a little too chaotic for that sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> which is why I think it's good that we formed a, a band, you know, yeah. we create music. And, and the last time we got together, it, it was a perfect synergy of, of that. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe yeah. there's something there like you can't do it all on your own. It, it does like your skills may depend on other people's skills. Well, yeah, yeah, that's very different true. Different people I, have different skills too, and, and it kind of all comes together. One of the greatest talents is to be able to recognize your own shortcomings and see it, you know, see where that thrives in someone else and know that you'll make a good team, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, like I, some might call that like a leadership quality, but like, I, I see it more as like a cooperative experience than a leader. Thing. Yeah, like, well, exactly. I think leadership may not necessarily uh, work in that case. Like, yeah, I, I'm just saying that's that's normally like how you would hear that at like some pep talk seminar <laughs> thing. Like, here's how you become a good leader. You know, like figure out where your shortnesses are and you know, find a person to fill it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> wow, we've gone all over and we barely talked about capitalism, which <laughs> we, we will eventually. Um, <laughs> well, there's kind of like a bunch of themes that deserve exploration because th there are some differences that we have on, on a few things, but we're, we'll, I don't think it needs to be here. Um. <laughs> So here's a thought that I thought really early on when we were talking. Um, and, oh, well, going to go down the woo territory again. What is? Beer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're going to need one for this. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what if these innate talents that certain people have are a product of reincarnation. I, you know, I've, I've had that thought before. Mm. And not even like, not even in the sense that, you know, the entirety of your personality somehow gets imprinted on another golem or something. You know, yeah, I, don't think, yeah. I don't think reincarnation is anything quite like that, but you know, whatever, energy matter combinations uh, create and maintain our personalities and our our talents even mm -hmm. um you know do they do they just dissipate when you die or can they float around i mean we're made of stars right yeah <laughs> like like yeah. If, if our entire bodies can be made of something you know, billions of years old from hundreds of millions of light years away. Well, why couldn't our personalities be the same way? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all it is, it, it's just a structure. Like I mean, else. there could be portions of our, our uh, psyche, let's say that are from an alien being. Yeah. Oh man. It's just drifted over here and like, Yeah, that could be. Oh wow. What if all the stuff that came here on meteorites and things like had alien DNA and that somehow influenced people and all these super special skills we have came from some other world? <laughs> yeah. Or what if we're like four-dimensional beings? Uh, or or more, and there's more to us than the sum of our three-dimensional parts. 
you know, the, these are things that I ponder on the regular. Um, the three dim- some of the three dimensional parts are pretty fun though. Yes, I, I am inclined <laughs> to agree there. <laughs> um, a little demonetizing meter is probably ticking up a little bit. Eh, it's like, is this demonetizable? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> mm-hmm. We didn't cross the line there. We didn't talk <laughs> about taking our pants off or anything like that. Oh, wait, <laughs> even by saying that, now we're demonetized. <laughs> Shit. What? I was just talking about the laundromat I'm going to open. Drop your pants and jacket off. (laughs) (laughs) If that is not a laundromat, it totally should be. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Well, you know, so what if... What if... I mean... It is kind of interesting how people tend to have innate skills, skills that seem otherworldly, like like there's no way they should be that good at that this early on. Um, it, and, and that's kind of supporting evidence, I guess, to me that reincarnation could be possible. I don't think it's the... Well, just like a lot of things, just like religion and all other woo stuff, I don't think things are what people think they are, but I think there's some merit to the arguments. Like there, there's something worthy of exploring there, but you definitely, yeah. it is not what you think it is. I, I, I would like to posit a theory that perhaps there's, things going on that we don't even realize are going on like a, on a subconscious level mm-hmm. you know as far as like a, a, a youth that demonstrates some kind of you know innate ability that we presume they were just born with or whatever but you know like in in a good chunk of those situations um you know their parent was good at the thing you know yeah and so like they may have been you know teaching their child without even knowing it just in their own mannerisms how they've uh, you know accustomed themselves to doing things and saying things that imparted you know a, a kind of normalcy to the motions that have to go into making that thing happen right yeah Well, and that's kind of what I was getting at with the environmental factors sort of thing. Like if you live with a family, you're raised by a family that's like book readers, right? Like they're probably going to have a lot of books. So the odds of you having access to lots of books and reading them are pretty high. And if you live in a family of musicians or singers or songwriters, well, you're going to have that influence or a family of mathematicians or engineers or whatever. Um, you know what? I'm surprised I didn't even bring this up yet being adopted, but there's a nature and nurture element to discuss here too. Oh yes. Um, oh. Because I, I just started thinking about a story that my dad likes to tell about when I was you know, a real little kid. Right. Like I was going to Montessori and I did it for like two years or something before first grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, between the first and second year of it, my dad would sit down with me with a book and he would try to teach me to read. And I would just like shut the book and set it down after like five minutes. And he was like, okay, I guess you're done. You know, and I, Mm. he thought I was just frustrated or whatever. But then I would like, once he left, I'd pick the book up and I would open it and start trying to sound it out by myself and stuff. Hmm. And like, I don't know how much of this is like just proud parent talking or whatever, but he says, I taught myself to read. I don't know how that's possible. I mean, like they had to be some amount of help that they gave me, but you know, for the, for the most part, like, I guess I, I wanted to just kind of 
figure it out by myself. Well, and, yeah, I, you know, I totally understand that because I, I'm actually the same way with learning things and doing things. Like, I don't like people telling me stuff. I like to kind of work my way through it and figure it out and, and fail and succeed on my own and then ask questions. Um, and so I think that's entirely possible. It doesn't exist in a vacuum, though. So, yeah, certainly there would have to be some kind of interaction at some point. Um, but everybody learns differently. Like, some people learn by doing, some people learn by watching or by reading or by seeing. Um, or there's all kinds of different methods. And it's by no means limited to just that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But I wonder, I, I wonder how much is nature and how much is nurture when it comes to talents like that. Like now I'm trying to think, like, I don't know my biological mother that well. I'm trying to think about what, what kind of maybe talents I might share with my biological father. I don't know. I might have to think on that. Well, I mean, it, and and it doesn't necessarily have to be like a direct hereditary thing either, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, there could be influences from early days too. Yeah. It Actually, could be a you know, combination of genes, you know, like neither parent is good at it, but their genes put together makes it. Ooh, know. yeah. That's <laughs> a really interesting idea. And actually, you know, I've been meaning to ask like, um, because th- I've wondered about this, like how much data, like since you're a biologist, like how much actual data can be carried through genetics, like through your DNA? Like, how- uh, oh gosh, uh, the exact number, there is an answer. Um, I don't have the exact number off the top of my head, but it was like, you know, if you trans translate it into, into, you know, bytes of data or whatever, it mm-hmm. was like a bunch. Yeah. Uh, no, and, I, and, and it's just because like the amino acid combinations, uh, you know, just by the law of numbers, there's so many potential combinations. Oh yeah. You get a staggering number of, you know, potential different iterations and, you know, and it's not even necessarily the same length of output, you know, right? So no, like, no. right there, you've got like, you're, you know, exponentially increasing the amount of permeations and, you know. Well, yeah, and as I understand it, I mean, from a programmatical standpoint, uh, DNA is like a procedural generation system. Um the, the the bits and bytes within it, like the the particular uh, data doesn't necessarily mean anything. It, it is more like instructions to direct things to do a thing. Uh, it, it's a how-to manual. process. Yeah. yeah. And and so so it's more than some of its parts. Yeah. And I mean at, at its most basic level, it basically just tells you how to create proteins. Yeah, the the way that those proteins then interact does something more complicated and so on and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, you know, that's why they call it like the building blocks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all the necessary infrastructure that by itself doesn't really do anything impressive or all that Mm -hmm. impressive, I should say, but you know, you put it all together in just the right combinations, you know, um, and then you follow development, like, mm-hmm. you know, the study of developmental biology is, is fascinating. Just thinking about how, like, all of this had to come together in such a way that it, you know, kind of has this basic blueprint that it follows that makes us, like, almost indiscernible from yeah. one another until like the point of birth like 
like all babies look the same. Basically, yes, right? they do, and they're all like, fucking let's, ugly. Stop let's not posting lie. your pictures on Facebook. Yeah, let's <laughs> not lie. All babies look exactly alike. Yeah, and then things start to change. You know, the experiences mold everybody. Yeah, you know, and that's interesting. That's super cool. Oh yeah, and, and like to me, what what was fascinating is is how like remarkably few variables there are that result in infinite complexity like or near infinite um like no two people are really alike and they share genetically like most information they're almost the same but it only takes like a couple variables for things to be wildly different you could be black or white or asian or tall or short you, you could be muscular you could be skinny heavy set like and, and and more and it's only like a couple of small variables that contribute to that um and and you know it kind of makes me wonder like well when it comes to the mind how many variables does it take to mold that um who man Uh, yeah. If you lived in a, in a in a vacuum, in a sense, right? Like if you just existed in a bubble all by yourself from the time you were like for as long as you could remember, anyway, you know, mm -hmm. basically from birth, you think you would have a talent at anything, Ooh. or does it require? interactions and experiences and things like that or do you think maybe you would just sit there and sing to yourself and you would be like the best singer in the world and no one would ever know because you live in a bubble well no <laughs> actually that's a really interesting thought experiment um now if you lived in a bubble not an ethical experiment mind you but no 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 that's true i say that a lot uh <laughs> <laughs> Well, concerned. it wouldn't be ethical if it were carried out, I think. <laughs> but if you lived in a bubble, you might not necessarily be able to realize those talents at all. Um, it really depends on the world you're exposed to uh, that, uh, I guess, gives you the opportunity to test your skills. Um, so, I don't know, if you exist in a vacuum... You might actually be kind of dumb and a dullard. Um, but I mean, here's the thing. There are some things that are coded into us, like instinct. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hold your breath underwater, find the breast with the milk, you know, like. Yeah. These are things that obviously nobody was like, you know, here's a pamphlet on where to find breast milk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like something that you just are born knowing how to do uh if that's if that's possible i don't see that it's impossible to be born with talent maybe not Talent's uh, just I, knowing how to do something that's true and and it is kind of interesting this is something like if you break down the structures of things like what is a breast what is milk what is your mouth like, how do you operate it? How can, like, a simple set of instructions direct you in that, down that course, I guess? You know, to, well, how do you figure that out? A scientific experiment involving our mouths and many breasts. Hey, sign me up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, demonetized. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but yeah, no, you know, I, th I think it's possible for people to be born with certain talents, at least. Yeah, and maybe maybe it, it, we're looking at it on like a different scale or a different level. Like maybe skills are not necessarily uh, like a micro thing. Maybe they're more of a macro thing, or vice versa. Uh, that. 
being able to do something involves a certain very simple set of skills. Um, and it just depends on what conditions you're brought into the world in your environment. Um, and, and that's it. Like maybe that's all that it takes. If that makes any sense. I, I mean, more beer. that's a that's a interesting topic well we've been we've been going for like over an hour now so i I think yeah interesting (laughs) we we have a a talent for jabbering at people we we actually do like the fact that we could take basically any subject and talk about it for an hour and bring up like new novel ideas like probably shit that no one's ever thought of before um that that says something that's a talent i think that we have yeah so if you enjoy our talent hit that subscribe button Oh yeah, and stick around to the song at the end because it'll be a Cause good it's a one. Song, and it's at the end. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be good. I think. I mean, you know, good is subjective, so you know it kind of depends on what you think good music is. I mean, if you like Carly Rae Jepsen, well, you might not like our songs. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> until you land on the episode where we do a uh, it's not a duet. What is it with three people? Um, a, a triad? Menage a trois? Uh, Menage a trois <laughs> with uh, Carly Ray Jepsen. It's coming. <laughs> I'm going to assume she's country because there's three names. <laughs> I don't know for certain, though. Uh, not really. Yeah. No? Uh, okay. no. Call me maybe. maybe. That, that would be a good thing to look up, but don't look it up unless you want to have a song stuck in your head for like 17 days. Um, Yeah. Oh, this is actually a pretty good, pretty good conversation. I feel like we, we didn't really feel like there's actually a lot more to talk about, um, but that's, that's pretty typical. Um, Yeah. We'll come Speaking back of to country it. and talent. I've been thinking of seeing if I could write an electronic country song. Mm. See, see if I have any talent in the country realm. So Ooh. it's never really been my favorite, but I've always had this song idea for a country song called um, what if there's no Kmart in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> I just think that that sounds perfectly country, right? It does. And well, okay, so country is actually a lot more open to different ideas than you you would think. Mm-hmm. Um, it now, I've been following country for a long time because my mom was really into country, um, so I kind of just follow it for her sake. And yeah, there's some rap country, electro country, not not. Too much, but it's there. Um, and yeah. But I mean, you know, why not? Um, is there country metal? Oh, wait, yeah. Metallica's load album was. Yeah, yeah there, there definitely is. Well, and, <laughs> and, and actually, country and metal uh, go way back. Uh, yeah, that, no, that's true. Um, like blues is the source of all that. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, there's a song, Chris Ledoux, uh, Hooked on an Eight Second Ride. It's about like rodeo stuff, right? Hmm. But it's like almost the exact same riff as an Iron Maiden song. <laughs> but it's just country, you know? So like there is there is similarities to be seen here and there. Well, there, yeah, exactly. There's cross-genre uh, effects. I mean, look at uh, what, what was the... Um, uh, uh, walk this way with run dmc and uh uh, aerosmith aerosmith yeah 
Oh, like, uh, oh, that was that was cool. Yeah, they, that was the yeah, best they, version. They, that was that was like the definitive version in my <laughs> mind. Like, I oh, I love that. Like, that was so awesome. Like, it actually was because it it was like ten years old by that time. Yeah, and Steven Tyler had been had been able to sit with it long enough. And you and I know this now having written music for decades, like Mm -hmm. after you sat on a song for a while, eventually you think it would have been way better if I did it this way. Mm -hmm. And so he, his vocal performance on the chorus was way better. In the version, Like, yeah. Oh yeah. I just remember that point where they like busted through the wall. Like, (laughs) Like, oh, wow, this is so cool. This is, like, completely next level. (laughs) Like, rap and rock, like, joining forces? This is freaking amazing. Yeah. This should happen more often. (laughs) Mm. Sadly, when it became popular, it was never really that good. I mean, there were gems here and there, but, like, it wasn't that level, you know? like No, but it did show that it's possible to have a cross genre thing yeah. um, that, that actually works. Um, oh, yeah. and, you know, you, and, yeah, maybe if you did like there's well, political lessons to be learned there. And that's true. Yeah. Racial tension lessons to be learned there. Mm-hmm. And all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's like country and rap blends. And, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and it's only fitting because they're actually good, despite I mean, what like, people think. They're actually a lot more interconnected than people. All, all music has beat and melody. Yep. And if you blend the two together from any genre, mm-hmm. your your potential to find something good is pretty high. You know? Well, and you also have theme too. Um, and if you listen to rap and you listen to country. Their themes are actually kind of similar uh, in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you go from a thematic angle, um, uh, well, but that, that's the whole point. Like, expand your horizons. Yeah. Like, listen to more stuff. You know, if you, if you only listen to rap, listen to uh, classical music or something. You know, if you only listen to country, uh, listen to rap. Like, Listen to everything. I I love all kinds of music. All kinds of music. And and I think they're all good. Well, no style is inherently good, but there's good stuff in every style. Yeah. It's better to have loved and lost than to live listen to an album by Olivia Newton John. <laughs> Right about now, I got an inkling that people are gonna be writing songs about the way humanity lost its way through the forest in the trees of trust. Only to elect a bunch of chosen scrubs. Work to your mother, pops, and dog. Get the people in the peanut gallery going hard. Wild girls in the streets let their shirts galore. While their mama stay at home, calling them mono. Break it down for me. You say you got your murder birds in the tank, but there's people killing others with the almighty bank. And I don't wanna see that the world's a dump. But who's really loving life in the age of Trump? I think we stuff it and I'm here to think That people shouldn't really think this shit don't stink Like everyone has got to play by the rules But you got a swift kick on land and your family jewels Wow <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>